Number 35, can you perceive the shift in frequency produced when you pull a tuning fork toward you at 10 meters per second on a day when the speed of sound is 344 meters per second? To answer this question, calculate the factor by which the frequency shifts and see if it's greater than 0.3%. All right, so check out, first thing is check out number 30. I spoke about the formulas in a little more detail. We're gonna shorthand it here. So we have two formulas for Doppler effect. We have SMO, S-S-M-O, and we have SOMS, S-O-M-S. SMO, S-S-M-O, stands for Stationary Source Moving Observer, and then the SOM stands for Stationary Observer Moving Source. Okay, so in this problem, what's the source? Well, the tuning fork is the source. It's producing a certain frequency, and it's moving toward, right, an observer, meaning you, right? So we know we're dealing with the SOMS formula, okay? Now, SOMS, the SOMS formula, how do we remember which one it is? Well, remember, SOMS has the signs and the bomb bombs. So SOMS and the bomb bombs, right? So when we look at these two uh, formulas here, one has the sign on the bottom, the other has the sign on the top, and that's how we memorize it, all right? So now uh, we're gonna use that formula, okay? So frequency of the observer is gonna be equal to frequency of the source times the velocity of the sound, and they put the W there, velocity of the sound divided by the velocity of the sound plus or minus the velocity of the source. Now, and we spoke about this too. You got two signs in here, but only one is gonna work for this particular problem. When you move an object, or when the object moves toward you and the object is producing the, the sound, you are going to be dealing with the minus in here, okay? And again, number 30 explain why. So all I can do here is basically just calculate this fraction. Let's see what that can tell us then, right? So the frequency of the observer is gonna be equal to the frequency of the source multiplied now by the velocity of the sound. So that's 334, excuse me, 344, divided by then 344 minus now 10, okay? So let's calculate that. So frequency of the observer is equal to the frequency of the source. Now multiplied then by, what does that reduce down to? So three, uh, 344 divided by 344 minus 10. So this works out to be one point. So we got 1.003 or so, right? 1.03, okay? So what this tells us now is if I were to just get all of these unknown variables onto the left-hand side, it would look something like this. The frequency of the observer relative to the frequency of the source is equal to 1.03 times larger than the uh, source, okay? So in other words, you know, if the frequency of the source was, let's just say, 100 hertz, that means the uh, observer here of that fork, of the tuning fork, would observe a sound of, a frequency of sound uh, 103 hertz. All right, that should hopefully make sense. So all we have to do is now think about, is this shift, meaning going from 100 to 103, it's the same thing as going from 1 to 1.03, is that greater than 0.3%? Okay, so when you look at this, then what percent increase, right, is going from 100 to 103? You tell me a three percent increase, right? In other words, when you look at this, when you have a when you have a, a certain um, value, one point oh three, and this is the amount of times larger it is than some relative value, you can simply just subtract one, and you'll get the decimal as the percent, point zero three. But you got to remember, this is the decimal. This is not the percent. To convert that to percent, you got to multiply it by one hundred, right? So that's essentially three percent. So there's a three percent difference. Now, if you, can, if you perceive differences of 0.3%, is 3% larger than 0.3? Well, sure it is, right? It just gets a little confusing because it's 3. 0.3 and 3, right? But definitely bigger. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Take care.